Good afternoon, everybody. Um, yeah, as, as, as James said, I have some issues with my eyes. I have an eye condition called keratoconus, and it's an irregular steeping of the cornea, which means that basically I have to wear two contact lenses in each eye. I have to wear a soft lens to protect my eye, and then I have to wear a hard lens for my vision. So I have no lenses in this eye today and two in this eye, but this eye, of course, is bad today. It is what it is. So, got my cool snazzy sunglasses on. Hopefully, you know, I can see. But that aside, which I gotta tell this because it's hilarious. So, because I had my little problems with my eyes this morning, I did not realize when I put my boots on that I put the boots on that had actually split yesterday. So I have boots on that have a nice little hole back here because when you buy shoes and you're like me, you buy two of each pair because it's always that pair that you really like in winter that just goes to kaput. And then you're like, oh, I really like those boots and you try to find them and you can never. So yeah, that has been my day this morning and I missed the breakfast. So I didn't even get my eggs and freaking bacon. I'm so mad. <laughs> What a day. <sighs> Accessibility. Yeah. So I'm going to hold my phone because I'm thinking, uh, whatever. I'll be dabbing my eyes. Um, <laughs> so yeah, and um, Nick needs to stop dancing back there with that kilt on. <laughs> so this is me uh, on Twitter. That's me on just about all social media. Um, actually, all social media. I don't have a public Facebook page or anything, but Instagram, my pictures are usually really crap because my vision's crap. 50-50 um, pledge, that's something that I work on with a friend, a white 50-year-old male VC. Um, and that is where we're talking about accessibility and equality and basically inclusivity for female founders in particular, um, people of color, underrepresented, just about everybody, basically, to help them get funded and change the mindset of VCs. And also, I'm the mentor ambassador for Tech London Advocates Women in Tech. And one of our things is about equity when it comes down to helping people within the tech industry get financing. All right, so we have this thing. Oh, man, there we go. Three A's, we have this thing called the three A's and it actually really works for me personally, but it's also the mantra of Tech London Advocates Women in Tech and also the 50-50. And basically it comes down to these three here. Awareness, advocacy, and action. Going a little bit too fast there, but that's all right. Slow my roll, slow my roll. Just trying to make sure I don't fall off stage, actually. <laughs> and, and action. And basically, what it comes down to is because we know that those three things really impart some knowledge in every single step. It, it's a framework. I'm not going to have very many numbers in this because we all know the numbers. Um, and if you don't, I'll do one or two just in case. But it really gives you a roadmap and a framework of what you need to do in order to get to something that is more about accessibility for people. So you have all these VCs. And I usually start off with like a little bit of a question when I'm going in and I'm talking to VCs with Chris and saying, hey, um, so we're looking at your numbers that are publicly available, basically your portfolio, and we're seeing that you haven't got very many females or underrepresented individuals. We've done some background checks and we haven't seen anybody that may have any sort of, we haven't seen anybody who might be deaf. We haven't seen any of your portfolio that is really very inclusive. It's always, sorry, white guys that are heterosexual and just, you know, what's considered the norm. Um, we're just seeing companies that are that way. And, Society is not that way, which is why most of your portfolio will not make any money and you only have one billionth 
unicorn out of, you know, 20 billion companies. Well, I said more than that, but, you know, there's not a unicorn for everybody. Because why? Because you're funding companies that don't represent society, so it's going to fail. And they say, yeah, yeah, you know, um, we're working on it, really. You're aware, right? And they say, well, you know, we, we don't have anybody in our networks. I always say, bullshit. Because first of all, if you are, three A's, aware. How are you aware? Leading question I was asked is, do you read Fast Company? And they go, oh yeah, I read Fast Company. Okay. So, um, you know who Oprah Winfrey is, right? Yeah, yeah. You know who Serena Williams is, right? Yeah. Oh, you know who Serena Williams is married to? And they're like, yeah, uh, the co-founder of Reddit. Yeah, so you know that she also invests. Yeah. Oh, you read Fast Company. Yeah, I already told you that. Guess what? Who was on the cover of Fast Company? Who was a black female? Uh, I don't know. Yes, you do. You know Arlen Hamilton, who is probably the well, most well-known black female VC because she has risen so fast over the last three years into that sector. And they, oh, well, you know, um, yeah, I, 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 don't, I still don't know who she is. Bullshit, yes, you do. You're aware that are females out there that are black females that are out there that are competing with you now. You've just decided to shut it off because that means you'd have to actually acknowledge that there are actually black females that need funding, that there are actually females that are LGBTQ because she is that need funding and that's where she's working. And you might actually have to acknowledge that because she raised her fund, she's actually helping people that are underrepresented. That's awareness. You have the awareness. It is about making sure that when you have that awareness, you start to do something. So I'm calling them out. I'm saying you are aware. You know there are people like Oprah Winfrey out there who has funded schools. She has funded a school. She's developed a school. You know that. You know that she has the money. She's doing it. There are lots of people out there that are doing these things and they're saying, Blinders, I don't know. I'm not aware. There's not people in my network. Bullshit. Once you've done that, I always talk to them about the 2%. And the 2% is basically that number that everybody, is 2% of women get funded. And I'm sorry for everybody, women, it's because I am a woman, heterosexual. Um, <laughs> with my eye condition, so. Uh, but I'm, I generally always seem to focus around that when I'm speaking to people, because I'm speaking from experience. And it comes down to that 2%, 2% of females that are out there looking for funding get funded, 2%. If you're a black female, it's even less. If you're a Hispanic female, it's even less. It's like 0 0.02, 0 0.001 or something ridiculous. And those numbers are pretty stagnant. They haven't changed that much. Everybody talks about them changing in the last three years. Considering that women are 51%, the Brexit number, 50, 51, 52% of the world's population, and in the UK it is 51% of the, percent of the population is, are female. In the US, I believe it might be 51.4 or something like that. But basically, we're more than half of the world. And, and I am using the broad term of female. I'm not going to say, you know, anybody who self-identifies. It's really about the, the actual statistics that they, they measure because not every poll is correct. But 2%. So we know 2% of females that are going in to get funded get funding. Yeah, that, that's really dismal when you think of all the businesses that are out there that are female founded. But it's not really a pipeline problem because they always say, it's a pipeline problem. Well, we don't know anybody in our networks. You know, people aren't coming through that we can talk to. It's not, it's a power problem. And it basically comes down to the fact that the people that are in power do not want to be giving up their power. And women, people of color, those that are underrepresented, basically 
are being statistically shut out. And it's not shut out because people don't have them in their pipeline. Everybody has one person in their network that is usually a first degree contact that has an issue that is not considered normal within the funding equity industry. Basically, if you're a black female or a black male, if you are an underrepresented person because of your sexual orientation or how you identify, it doesn't matter. Everybody has one person and they're claiming not to be aware because they don't want to be aware. They don't acknowledge that because it's easier to just ignore. And once you've gotten beyond the point of ignorance, you can't feign that you don't know. Once you are aware, you should then become an advocate. And it is an advocate for change because we all know the numbers that once you are more inclusive with how you give away your money, if you're a fund, or how you actually are approached and have invited people to come and pitch you for money, that your portfolio, how much money you make, will become bigger. Which is why there are companies like Walmart that are the biggest in the world. There are companies like Amazon that are the biggest in the world because they are actually, unfortunately, using everybody. And I say using because they do. Using everybody. And their numbers, Amazon is going to continue to grow because that guy is just a maniac. Um, but, and actually, his hiring policies, even though they're not the best, they do have a pretty diverse hiring pool, not at the very top, which is a whole other issue, but generally throughout their workforce, they're actually very inclusive. And that's just, it's, it's a model that is baffling, but um, it, it, it works. But um, it comes down to the fact that they are working for everybody. And when you look at VC funds, I'm going to come back to that because it's, it's really, really frustrating. For me, when I go in as a black female and I have my friend who is a white male, who is a partner with a VC fund, um, I started a sort of a fund slash accelerator slash incubator slash angel investment with a friend of mine and we basically are just helping just about anybody and contacting and putting them in contact with people that we know within the VC world and also in private equity, whatever. We're helping them get to those routes and those avenues of approach. But when I go in and I speak to some organizations, not going to call anybody out here. I really was very tempted, but the pain in my eyes dissipated somewhat, so I'm not feeling that. <laughs> it's hard. It's hard, as James knows, sometimes I have no filters. Um, <laughs> but, um, but there are certain places that we've gone, especially here in the UK, and we've spoken to people and we said, we've looked at your portfolio, we know that one, it doesn't make a difference that you have five females coming in, that you have somebody who was LGBTQ come in and pitch you and you're saying, oh, well, you know, we're having more people come in. It doesn't matter if one year, say 2016, you had three people come in, and now it's 2019, you've had seven people come in. It doesn't matter. And they're like, why not? We've had more people. I'm like, you're the same three white guys sitting here. What has changed in your world that you will now understand what is different? Nothing. The only thing that is, is that you are now aware and you're talking the talk, but you're not walking the walk. You're not taking any action. You're not advocating for change. You're just basically saying, we're really aware that there's this issue and we want people to come and pitch us. We'll post those numbers. Oh, look, we had all these women and all these people that are underrepresented come to pitch us. But yeah, we still gave money to a bunch of guys over here who are building freaking scooters. You know, instead of helping somebody who's working on some software that could help somebody who is, is sight, you know, so has a sight deficiency. Heaven forbid you want to help some children that are going through issues where they need incubators. Wouldn't want to do that because it doesn't make them money. So now what we've done is we said, here's the money factor. You know that if you help people that are in the broader society, you will make more money because if you... And this one irritates me to no end 
as a person with a sight deficiency, mm, when they invented Google Glass, the first time I heard about it, way back whenever that was, 2000, early 2000s, I was like, wow, that's great. That I thought they really were gonna put that into the med tech category from the initial get-go. And what did they do? Oh, we're gonna make it some super cool glasses so our bros can wear super cool glasses. And I was like, you dumb shits. <laughs> if they had started out with that in med tech, it would still, it would be accepted right now. Everybody would be using it, because I know I would. But no, they didn't. They went for what was considered the cool thing to do. Just about any software you look at, any hardware, especially if it's hardware with enabled software that is going to help you do something, if they put it in the med tech category first, it usually becomes accepted. Because there are people that we're the best test subjects. I mean, we do it with medication already, so you know why not with hardware? Um, but it's, it's no, I, I'm getting off track because it really irritates me. <laughs> because if they had done that, more people that are in society that have vision issues would have been using this. We would have been testing it. We would have made it more refined. And it would have been more acceptable for the general population to use. But they started the other way. And unfortunately, there are a lot of things that they do within the tech industry where they start with the mass and then they decide, oh, we're going to refine it when they say, oh, yeah, maybe we can then use it for somebody that has a sight problem. Well, guess what? If you had somebody with a sight problem on your team developing that in the first place, you wouldn't have this issue. If you had somebody on your team in the very first place that thought about this beyond just thinking this is great for your average person. And this is one of the biggest issues when people are doing funding. They don't think about that person that considered not the norm. Um, and I, I use this because it's my thing. It's like, oh, I'm not the norm. Um, they don't think about those one or two people that may actually make their products better. They don't think about how that one or two people, when they come in and they're pitching for money, can actually make them more money. We know, we make people money, that's, it is what it is. But they don't think about that. And that's what's really missing when you look at the world of finance. It's, they're only thinking about what makes them keep their power. And unfortunately, the world is changing. And I always consider this, this year the, the year of sort of revolution <laughs> um, and action. That's my word of 2019. I, I said that last year it was going to be action. And, um, and it is really because now people that are not considered normal or mainstream have really decided to say, you know what, enough's enough. You know, when it comes down to the world that we live in, there needs to be a change. And the change that needs to happen is that we need more recognition, we need more acceptance, and we need action. Because I, for one, know that I am sick of having to go on London Underground. And when I'm having a bad vision day, I'm lucky I'm not blind. Because I can't imagine having to walk around constantly, and I do already do this, I tap whenever I'm walking upstairs. I've pretty much memorized all the stations, how many stairs going from, I don't know, going from today, I had to go from the, what line was I on? Victoria line to the central line. And then I was basically walking through Oxford Circus tapping because I knew how many steps it would take for me to get there. And that's ridiculous that you don't have places that are more sight, you know, that just are accepting and open and working more inclusively. And that's the world of finance because they don't think about it when you go in to pitch somebody. They don't have a room set up for somebody who might have a problem getting in there. You go to pitch somebody, you go to a bank even, they're not some banks. A lot of banks now, they don't even have that accessibility for people that have issues because there aren't bank managers in branches anymore. They've made it so it's just an ATM and maybe there's one teller. 
So it's shutting out everybody. We're not having the accessibility that we used to because there was a person. There was a person there that you could actually speak to. And while we're making technology the world's greatest thing and how it's going to help everybody, it doesn't work for everybody. We need to have both. It needs to be complementary. So that's just one of my little things. So it, it breeds to accessibility. Tech, mm, getting way, way off track. But eh, I'm not talking about that because that really annoys me. 2017, 2018, it was a study done by the um, American Express, and they put it in the state of business, uh, women-owned businesses, and that was the growth. 58%, and this is a US study, that's why, 58% of businesses, it grew from 2018, 2007 to 2018, there were 58% more businesses that were female-owned, that were women-owned and they had 46% more revenue than your, the male's ones that they compared it to. Yeah, anyways. Um, advocacy. As I said, once you're aware, you need to advocate. And that's basically all about listening and acknowledging what the issue is. You've now listened because you're aware. Acknowledge it and you advocate. What does that mean? It means showing your numbers, showing how many people have come and pitched to you, who you've given money to, how you've given it to them, how they've gotten that money, and what you're gonna do about it. The golden handshake. I think more people need to be aware that their networks are bigger than they think. The world is really very small. We all know this. Come on, you agree, right? The world's small. It is, especially now we have the power of the web. You know, it's a small thing. How I met James, the early days of Twitter. You know, that's how I got to meet James, 2007, when we all first got onto Twitter. And he was here in the UK and I was in the US. By the way, I was born in Balham. I'm British American. And, and despite the accent. And, um, and that's how the world is small and it's gotten smaller. And so when people say they're not aware, they don't have anybody in their network, our pipeline's bad, it's, no, no, that's, that's complete BS. We know that the world is not small. We know that everybody has somebody in their network. Even if you are in the slums of India, there is always that one person that may have gotten out of your village that knows somebody. And if there isn't, there's a chain. There is a chain. And sometimes I think about that, I think, oh, the world's small, but what about people that really live in places that are completely bombarded, disadvantaged? There's always somebody. Always. And I have to think like that because I have to be optimistic that the world is not completely bad. <laughs> Although there are some people I would actually like to get rid of. Um, <laughs> it's possible, too. I was in the military. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, I have friends on Secret Service detail. I told them, duck. Um, <laughs> but, <laughs> but, um, but it is really responsibility. It, it, it really, when you advocate, you take responsibility for your actions and for the actions of how you're giving money, how you're helping people get access to money, how you are really just enabling society to get more inclusive and better. And my favorite word, action. I don't care. It was pretty painful, and it is still pretty painful in my eye, but I always think if you don't take action, nothing's going to change. Nothing. You know, I have this thing that I, I say to myself every morning and every evening, and it is I get up, and I, it's a mantra, and it works for me, and I, I say to myself, you know what, positive thoughts, positive words, positive actions. And that really yields positive transformations. And I have to say that because like anybody in the world, anybody who has any sort of, especially any disadvantage to them, perceived disadvantage or, or actual disadvantage, you have to think like that in order to continue. <laughs> And as a black female with an eye disorder who, you know, I, I also have nocturnal epilepsy. There's all these, all of, and those two things both occurred in the last 12 years. Of course they did, after I got out of the military and after I was done with the intelligence services. Of course, you know, that's when the heavy depression sets in because you're like, oh my God, I can't believe I worked for those bastards and I did this and I've enabled the world to be somewhat bad. So now I'm doing penance. 
Um, but I always think about the actions, the actions of, that you take in order to make the world a better place. And we all know that money makes the world go round. And when I'm speaking to these VCs, it comes down to, I always tell them, look, you want to make more money? Because it ultimately always comes down to money. If you want to make more money, you need to include everybody in what you're doing. You need to include more people of color. You need, basically, just be inclusive in one, who you're hiring. So yeah, you've got four partners, they're white guys, but guess what? You can also hire some women, you can hire some people of color, you can hire some people that identify you know, or are non-binary. You need to hire people like that that are on your teams. And you don't hire them in the operational end, you hire them in your check writing end. They need to become partners in your companies. They need to sit down with you and when somebody comes in to pitch, that person doesn't feel so, so marginalized when they're in the room that they feel comfortable and they come in, certain level of discomfort, I mean, you're gonna be pitching for money, but when you go into the room, you wanna be able to look around the room and see somebody, maybe they don't look exactly like you, but somebody that you can at least identify with. It's not three white guys and you're a black female. You can go in and there may be just another female. That's something that you can recognize. They need to make sure they do that. They need to take action. They need to show their numbers. They need to say when they are done for their year, they're showing their funds, you know, they can say, guess what? We had women come in, they pitched to us, and they were pretty good because usually the women pitches are better. Um, you can say, we've had an improvement, we're giving more women money. You can show your numbers. When you show your numbers, it becomes more acceptable to people like us because we're gonna say, wow, they were really inclusive with what they're doing. I'm gonna to go to them to get money. I'm not gonna to go to the firm that has never given money to a female and don't have any females on their team because I'm pretty sure that it's gonna not, they're just not gonna really wanna to listen to me anyways. But that comes down to the accountability factor. Show your money. Show who you're giving it to, show how people are coming to you. Access to finance really sucks. It really sucks if you don't fit the standard norm. And I always throw those, I have to throw those quotes out there because who defined normal? The people in power. And now that power structures are changing, there is not really a normal because everybody has something that is considered wrong with them. I don't care who you are, even if you are a 50 year old white male VC, who, by the way, he is actually kind of little manic depressive. <laughs> so, so yeah, he has a mental health issue. So everybody has something that's considered not normal. There is no normal. The only normal is the fact that we're human. And unfortunately, <laughs> that's not even normal because we're screwing that too. Um, CRISPR. Um, but, um, <laughs> but I would say it really comes down to, this is a picture I took at a castle in Germany. And whenever I think about accessibility to finance, it really comes, it's like, no shit. Guess what? Everybody, it needs to be more inclusive for everybody. It doesn't matter where you've come from, what you've done, where, what you're doing. Everybody needs accessibility to finance because you need people that are developing things for the world that are more inclusive. I, for one, want to be in a building that I know was, there was somebody on that design team that one, had a problem with their vision, two, had a problem with their hearing, three, had some sort of issue with how they really perceived your space. Because I know that if somebody's in that building that designed it, that I know that that is the best building to be in should there be a fire because they will have accounted for everything that may possibly happen because they are more aware than a person who has 20-20 vision that can hear perfectly because they may test it and go, well, you know what? I think that's a good place to put the fire exit sign. Meanwhile, someone like me is like this. I think that's a fire exit sign that looks red. But guess what? No, they designed something that's just a pretty sign with red background and lettering on it. So it really comes down to that. No shit. 
they said, that's it. No shit. I should have just put that up there and just talked, you know? <laughs> no shit. One, there, there are three things, and I, I don't know why I like threes. I have a really weird background. So I originally a chemical engineer, you know, became an intelligence analyst. So I, I have this thing, I like numbers, but then I'm conflicted because I don't really like numbers. Um, but here, you know, what am I doing? I'm working with some VCs, so obviously. But it really comes down to a few things. And I'm, I'm going to give you three, three, three. You have, and this is my definition when I go in to speak to the VCs, because they kind of just like it parted out. They're not very wide ranging in their thinking. So I always go in and I give them this definition to start. First and foremost, you have equality, and I say male and female. I said, we'll just do that just to start so you have some understanding. That's, you know, how you're born. And yeah, there is a certain subsection of the population, but we're just going to do that just so you understand what I'm talking about. Then you have diversity. And I don't use the word diversity. I use variety because it works better. When you say diversity to a lot of people, especially male VCs you know, of that certain age, their eyes roll back and they completely shut down. So when I say variety, I say variety. And that usually comes down to ethnicity. And I'm, we're just going to go with that just so you understand what I'm talking about. And then you have inclusivity. And guess what? That is everybody because there are Anybody in the world can be blind. Anybody in the world can be deaf. Anybody in the world can have a mental health issue. So that is everybody in the world. And that's what we really need to talk about. And so they go, oh, great. Forget about everything else. And then I say, we have three A's. Now that you are aware of those three pieces of the definition, guess what? You should now be advocating for some change in your world. Because when you advocate for that change in your world, Action can be taken, and once you have action can be taken, you're going to make more money in the long time. And then they go, oh. And I'm like, so that's easy, right? And they go, yeah. I'm like, no shit. So th that, that's it. I, you know, I did completely go off on a tangent. I think I'm out of time. I was a little spastic with my thinking and whatever. Yeah, because my eye. It really does actually hurt. I'm getting off the stage. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> really Thank you so much.